I've been living in Winnipeg, Manitoba now for 20 years and there were some things I discovered when I moved here, even just coming from Northwestern Ontario, that I hadn't expected. So on today's video, I'm going to tell you about the 12 things that you should know before moving to Winnipeg. Hi, I'm Jennifer Queen from the Jennifer Queen team in Remax Professionals here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And today I'm going to talk to you about 12 things you should know before you move to Winnipeg. So let's get right into it. The first is crime. I would say that moving to Winnipeg, it had a reputation. Others would talk about it and they would say that Winnipeg is known as the murder capital of Canada. I guess per capita here, we have a very high murder rate. What I would say to people looking at moving to Winnipeg is don't not move here because of the crime. Because what I have found to be true is that Winnipeg is an incredibly safe city to live in. There are certain neighborhoods that where violent crime is more prevalent, but if you have a good realtor putting you into a good area, there are plenty of safe areas to live in within this city where you can walk down the street at night and not have to look over your shoulder. A lot of what I have learned since living here is that the violent crimes are actually often gang related so specific to specific areas and not something that a typical person would be involved within of course if you want to find trouble here i'm sure you can and there's also a lot of domestic violence so that seems to take up a lot of the violent crime section of what's been going on i will say though that in terms of non-violent crime that does seem to be something that happens in almost every neighborhood so if you're leaving your car doors unlocked it's not uncommon for somebody to go through your car in the evening and rummage through for change. If you leave your bikes unlocked, their bike theft is quite prevalent here too. There are a lot of preventative measures you can do, obviously locking up your cars and bikes at night, but that does seem to be widespread across the city and in most neighborhoods that we see those kind of comments in those neighborhood groups that they are experiencing some non-violent crime within their area. There are also a lot of different types of communities here that you can live in that offer different types of lifestyles. So if you you're coming from another city though a lot of the time what I find are people coming from major metropolitan areas like Toronto or Vancouver what they're looking for is kind of that downtown core vibe what I will say is Winnipeg's downtown core is getting better but you aren't going to find that same kind of lifestyle of going to work and then heading out for dinner on the town before heading back to your beautiful high-rise condo that's just not really something that happens in our downtown core it's not as lively as active it's still viewed a little bit as a slum that being said there are a lot of initiatives happening in downtown Winnipeg that are turning that around. And what you are going to find too is that while the high rise options are limited, there are some beautiful buildings that have been put up down there. The Glass House Skylofts being one if you're looking for one of those more luxury downtown condos. But yeah, we're still not quite there. It would not be comparable to a major downtown core in other large cities within Canada. Most people here are still electing to live in the suburbs if they have a young family and we have beautiful communities here so if you're looking for a community that has a lot of green spaces walking trails and really just great options to get out with the family what you're going to find are there are a lot of neighborhoods here that have those offerings I believe there's probably this is not a stat I have looked up but I believe there are probably more playgrounds and green spaces per capita here than any other city don't quote me on that though the third thing Thing that you should know is you really should have a car if you live in Winnipeg. You can get around on public transit, don't get me wrong. I could get really anywhere in the city today if I wanted to via bus. But what you're going to find are that our option or our route options are a little bit more limited in terms of scheduling. And this is being improved as we add on to our rapid transit system and they're making quicker routes to the downtown core, to the University of Manitoba, etc. But we're still not on par with other large cities cities. What you're also going to find in the winter is it's much more painful to wait for that bus for 20 minutes to come than it is in other cities. It gets pretty cold waiting here. There aren't bus shelters at every stop so sometimes it can be a pretty cold wait. In this cold weather it's not uncommon for some of our buses to break down on those colder days or just not want to start 
So a lot of the time the roots can get delayed or even delayed due to snow, depending on weather conditions. So it's not the best transportation system, but I do think you could get anywhere in the city that you wanted to. It's just, it's probably not gonna be as fast, effective or convenient as it might be in other large cities. Coming from Kenora, Ontario though, it was an amazing bus system because I think we only had one bus in Kenora. So when you're buying a car here, what you're going to want to ensure is that you're buying a car that has a block heater. Sometimes cars coming out of Southern Ontario or Quebec don't have those. But what a block heater is, is it it's just provides a cable for you that you can plug into a wall that keeps your car warm when it gets really cold so that your oil isn't kind of freezing solid in there and your car can start the next morning. I don't know if it actually freezes solid, but it can get so cold that your car won't start in the morning. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to invest in are winter tires. I highly recommend four winter tires, not two. Some people only get two, but I know from personal experience or I guess my sister's personal experience that after she had an accident and the police were giving her advice, they said, you make sure that you have four winter tires next time. Two is very ineffective. But the four winter tires will really help you to navigate in the snow here. So you'll have a set of summer tires and a set of winter tires and you swap those out when the seasons change. Another thing you're gonna wanna do is well, not necessarily, but make sure you have a vehicle that has a fair amount of clearance. I personally drive an SUV that has enough clearance so that I can get out of deep spots when I'm showing them in the winter, but just don't be expecting to get around in your low rise car in some of the winter, especially if you're going down back alleys here, the snow can get quite deep. Also, and it's a huge bonus. If you have Command Star, you are winning when you come to Winnipeg. Schooling. I truly believe that we have some of the best school systems here in Manitoba, whether you be going to public school or private school, preschool, up to Montessori or all the way up to post-secondary. And we have two well-renowned post-secondary options, the University of Winnipeg, which has a downtown campus, and the University of Manitoba, which offers all kinds of programming, whether you wanna get into architecture, engineering, medicine, pharmacy, they have great programming there. And we have had a lot of really amazing students graduate from there and stay in the province. The fifth thing you should know about moving to Winnipeg before you move here or Manitoba in general is it's cold cold in the winter. It's not uncommon to see temperatures in the minus 40. We kind of hover around minus 20 on average for those winter months. The last few winters have been warmer. In general, what I find is that it's a cold, it's probably one of the coldest provinces to live in. Also, what I didn't think of when I was moving here from just two hours east was how much colder Winnipeg is from Northwestern Ontario. And the reason for that is that what we have here are some incredibly strong winds because we're flat open prairie land and that wind chill is real. It might say minus 20 on your phone, but then once you get outside, it feels even colder. Sometimes as cold as minus 50 if that wind is really blowing that day. And you can only stay outside on those days in, in that minus 50 temperature for like four or five minutes at a time. It's that bad. Number six are tax rates. So what you're gonna find when you're coming here are that if you look at Canada in general, we're the eighth highest, which isn't bad for tax rates, but in terms of tax rates for, and I'm talking about income here, if you're looking though at income tax for the Western provinces, we are actually one of the highest. So we pay more taxes than Alberta, Saskatchewan. I'm going to include a tax table below that you can see just what our tax rates are here in Manitoba. You will see if you're comparing us to other prairie provinces or that we are definitely higher tax than them. The next thing I want to talk about in terms of taxes is the land transfer taxes here in Manitoba. We pay a much higher rate than other provinces do. They are working at trying to get that down. There's always uh, some kind of lobbying going on to our government. But as we sit right now, we are definitely one of the highest taxed provinces when it comes to transferring land. And you pay this when you buy, you don't pay it when you sell, but it is quite a hit when you are first purchasing your new home. We also have PST here, which I know some provinces do not. So on a lot of goods when you're buying them, here you will pay GST and PST. It is not the same as HST and our 
PST comes in lower than HST. I think we're at 12%, so 5% GST, 7% PST, so combined it's 12. You don't pay that though on things like gas, which makes our gas cheaper here than other provinces because you're only paying 5% instead of that 12 or 13% HST you might in Ontario. So yeah, I would say we are a fairly heavily taxed province, but what I will say is you make up for this on point number seven, which is our cost of living. So our cost of living here is much lower than other provinces. Part of that is because of our home values. What you're going to find in other provinces, you can find for really half the price here in Manitoba, or at least if we're looking at national averages. At the time of filming this, the national home price average was about 700,000, and we were sitting at about 320, 330,000 for a home value for an average home here in Winnipeg. So the first thing we can look at at cost of living is really slashing your mortgage payment nearly in half or possibly more depending on where you're coming from. If you're coming from Toronto or, or Vancouver again, it might be much less than that. We also pay a lot less here for our utility costs. Manitoba is known as a huge hydroelectric supplier. We get it from the dams up in Northern Manitoba and we supply electricity both to Ontario as well as I believe the United States. And what you're going to find is that we have some of the cheapest electric kilowatt hours that you can find anywhere. So while in other provinces, I've heard that people don't do laundry during the day because those are peak hours, we don't have that here. You can do laundry at 2 p.m., at 10 p.m., 9 a.m. You're going to pay the same price in kilowatt hours and those expenses aren't gonna be significant when you're coming from another province. It's gonna be pretty minimal. You're paying about a third of the price per kilowatt hour as you are in other provinces. The eighth thing I wish I knew when I was moving here was just how great the sport options are. I guess when you're moving to a new province, it's hard to get situated, but there are great offerings in any sport you wanna play, whether it be hockey or European handball, ultimate frisbee, there are leagues here you can sign up for. If you're looking for the professional sports, we have a variety of options. The Canada Life Center here plays home to the Winnipeg Jets, an NHL team, as well as the Manitoba Moose, which are our AHL team. The IG field here is home to our CFL team, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, as well as our soccer team, FC Valor, if you wanna catch a professional game. And Shaw Park, right on Waterfront Drive downtown, plays home to the Gold Eyes, which are a great option to go and watch in the summer. And the tickets are so inexpensive. You can get in there for like $9 per seat. It's really a great, great evening activity in the summer. If you want to register personally for any sports, there's a variety of different clubs you can sign up through, whether it be Winnipeg Rec League, Canland Sports, or even through the universities that offer programming both for students and some offer for non-students as well. And sometimes the Winnipeg Rec and Leisure Guide is another great option to look into. Number nine, I think that a lot of people think when you're moving to a flat prairie land in the dead of winter, there is nothing to do, but there is no reason for you to ever be bored in Winnipeg, Manitoba. There are so many opportunities to get out and do things. In the winter months when it is that minus 50, like I was talking about, yes, you might not wanna do particular activities outside, but there are so many options to get together with others indoors here too. An easy place to start would actually be with the City of Winnipeg and looking into their leisure guide. They come out with City of Winnipeg leisure guide every spring for the spring summer months and then the fall for the fall winter months. And what you're going to find in this guide are there are a variety of activities to get out and to meet people and to just enjoy learning new things. So sometimes it's physically related. So there's swimming lessons or you might have gymnastic options, dance options. And this is from young to senior. We're talking toddler to senior here. But there's also options for sushi making classes or archery or really cool crafting classes or even just just mom groups. What you're going to find are there a variety of options and groups that you can register for that you can get out and enjoy your community. A word of advice though is these classes do actually fill up quite fast. Oftentimes when the city of Winnipeg switches it over to registration time you'll find on the websites that there are long lineups or that you don't necessarily get into the class you want so be sure to get on there create your account and be ready when the time does come to set up. Swimming lessons 
conditions here are particularly competitive. In the more mild winter days, what we often do are we get out and we go skating on the Assiniboine River or we go down to the Forks just to enjoy some outdoor activities. There's so much to do. Almost every park here has some kind of toboggan ride, or I should say big park here have toboggan runs just so you can do that sliding in the prairies. And if you haven't visited it before, I would highly recommend as well on a summer night, Assiniboy Downs if you want to watch some horse races. It's a pretty cool experience. The tenth thing I think you should know about Winnipeg is when you are moving here, the people are so friendly. It might catch you off guard at first if you're walking down the street, passing somebody you don't know and they say hi, but that's very common here. To extend a greeting, to talk to somebody in the queue when you're buying groceries, it's very common. Just embrace it. If you're an introvert like I, I am, it can be awkward at first, but you'll get used to it and you will start enjoying it. What I have found personally is that whether it be professionally as a realtor, which can be a competitive industry, or when I was in school here, everybody just seemed to welcome me with open arms and was so inviting and warm. It was really nice coming from another place, getting to meet all these new people that were just so genuinely friendly and caring. You're also going to find here that there are really only two or three degrees, I would say, of separation between you and anybody. I have found still to this day, when I'm meeting new clients, if something comes up while we're discussing their home or their, their group of friends, that it always seems like we have friends in common. It really is a small community, even even if we are a population of over 700,000. Which brings me to my next point, which is not hugely important if you're moving here, but it's just a cool fact to know is that the majority of the population of Manitoba lives within Winnipeg. We have a big population here, but the rest of Manitoba is very spread out. The next biggest city I believe is Brandon and then Portage La Prairie. There's other city options. Brandon's a cool option just because it's halfway between Regina and Winnipeg if you want other city options. Winnipeg really is the biggest city in Manitoba and the bulk of the population actually lives here. The 12th thing I would like to talk about, which I feel kind of reassures people when they're moving here and looking to buy here is that our real estate has been some of the most stable real estate in all of Canada for the last several decades actually. What you're going to find if you're looking at historical real estate values here in Winnipeg is a slow upward trending line and things have just slowly gone up over time. We've never been a super volatile market with huge increases in value over the years and then declines in following years. I think in the last 40 years we've only had two years where property values actually declined. So we're not seeing these huge jumps in value except for 2021 which has been kind of crazy but what you're going to see are kind of those incremental increases year over year which has made for a very stable market for us even in 2007 through to 2009 when the rest of the world was crashing we have not seen that here it's just been a solid stable investment for real estate for people for many many years so those are my 12 things I think you should know about Winnipeg before moving here but if you feel there's something important that I've missed please be sure to leave it in the comments section below. And if you found value in this video today, please be sure to hit that like button. It really helps me in determining just what kind of videos to shoot next. And also, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Again, I'm Jennifer Queen with the Jennifer Queen team and Remax Professionals. Thanks for watching today, guys.